Okay, good evening, everybody. Evening, gentlemen. Um, welcome to Teaching Boys School. I'm really sorry we couldn't keep the weather as beautiful as it was last week. It's a bit of a shocking evening, isn't it? But thank you for coming out. Um, we're going to try and keep this as snappy as possible. And really, we have two objectives uh, this evening. And it's really the start of the next part of your education journey. It starts now. It starts here today. So... We're going to talk, first of all, uh, Mr. Larson, who's head of upper school, is going to talk you through uh, what the next few months looks like uh, towards uh, mock exams and through into revision periods and then into uh, the end of year 11. So we'll be looking at uh, study skills, at what to expect over the next little while in year 11, and also about uh, how parents can help, how you can support, because that's probably the most frequent question that we get at this time of year. What should we be doing at home? So Mr. Larson's going to cover a little bit of that. Um, I'm going to introduce the sixth form. Uh, we know that you have choices. <laughs> we hope that you choose to fly with Hitchin Boys School uh, into the sixth form, but we recognize that there are other uh, schools out there, other options that you might have, such as apprenticeships or college, etc. But we want to tell you a little bit more about uh, Hitchin Boys sixth form. And that is, again, start of the journey towards uh, sixth form. Uh, it's quite an extended journey in some ways, thinking about uh, options, thinking about choices, thinking about careers, thinking about what might be happening, not just post-year 11, but post-school. What happens when I leave school? What might career might I be interested in? What are my talents? What are my vocations? What are my interests? So there's an awful lot of thinking to do over the next little while, and hopefully this session will be the start of that uh, journey. It's not designed to answer every single question you might have, uh, because you might not even know the questions that you don't yet know. Um, but it is uh, just sowing the seed. And really, the, the next part of the journey will be then in January, when there's a, a, an evening to come and meet the subject teachers and go into lots more detail. By that stage, you'll have mock exam results. You'll have some more information about uh, where your talents lie, where your interests might lie. And then we can dig into the detail about what each A-level course might look like. So that's not tonight. Tonight is more the introduction uh, and kind of acting as that bridge between year 11 and potentially going into year 12 or, or other routes. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at that and hand over now to Mr. Larson. Thank you. Um, as Mr. Milne uh, stated, my name is Mr. Larson. I'm head of Key Stage 4. Um, I'm responsible with my pastoral team and subject teachers is to get your child, get your student through the next stage, and that is to the end, uh, the end of key stage four and to the end of what has been a two-year learning journey. So it's been a real privilege for me. I, I uh, accepted the role um, towards the end of last term, uh, the end of last year, and it's been a really, really busy but very rewarding um, first half term. But I want to stress a number of, of, of things to parents because uh, it's like an equilateral triangle. We're, we're all working together for the same goal. Um, and these are the six themes that uh, I, we expect um, of our years, year 11 students. So attendance and behavior are the two basics. So there's a clear link between poor attendance and lower academic achievement. There will be heads of key stage and, uh, and, and heads of school all over the country now banging that drum. Um, routine non-urgent medical appointments during school hours must be avoided. It's that important. And students must arrive to school on time. That's a prerequisite. Now, our Year 11 students have already completed 36 teaching days so far in school, 107 full teaching days remaining. So, why should we focus on my child's attendance, particularly in Year 11? That is the evidence. I'm an historian. I work on evidence. And those, if you look at uh, the data, that data was taken from our year 11s last year. So if we look at the groupings, so those year 11 students last year that attendance was above 95%, their average GCSE grade was 6.2. 
across all abilities and across all subjects. So that, that was above 95%. If we look at the second category, if we drop down and look at the, the groupings between 80.1 and 90%, look at the average drop, 4.7. And then when we look at the, the, the groupings, the third group, it drops down to 4.2. That's how important attendance is. And we need your help with that. So if your child has a cold or a cough, please send them into school. We've got fantastic pastoral support workers that will be able to get them through the day. It's as important as that. So looking at our year 11 attendance for the first half term. So I scrutinized, I had a look through the data uh, during half term, the break. So year 11 students with 100% attendance, we have roughly about 91 out of the 207, 208 students we have in our year 11 cohort. That represented 44%. When I dropped it down to the above 95%, that rose to 69%. So that tells me we still got a third of our students, though, dropping down to this attendance grouping here. So we really need your help with this. I know it is like me giving you a sermon here, but those are the statistics. Get your child into school. We've got the professionals here that will get them to where they need to be at the end of, uh, of year 11. Okay. So, behaviour is, is the, the second, uh, the second of, uh, of the themes. We simply can't be dealing with behaviour. I've got a duty of care to each and every one of you as parents, and we can't have disruption in class. But overall, the majority of our year 11 students have made an excellent start. That's a positive. All I need to do is get that attendance up. And we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at that. And I'll be banging that drum throughout the year. OK, so going beyond the basics, um, this is what we also need our students to be. We need students to be engaged. We need every one of our year 11 students to be turning up for lessons, with the right, in the right frame of mind. We need them to be active, proactive, not passive. So we need them to be asking questions in, in, uh, in lessons, and we need them to be taking uh, control of their own learning journey. Uh, commitment. So this encompasses everything so far. So we need your child to attend every day. We need your child to be punctual to school and lessons. We need your child to attend every intervention that we've got planned from now till the GCSE starts in, in May. We've targeted, we have a number of targeted uh, students who need ha extra help with the core subjects. That started very, very early in September. We need your students to, to turn up for those intervention lessons. Um, Commitment. We need, as I say, your child uh, to to be fully prepared for their mock exams. So I'm going to look at how we can we can do that uh, with some revision skills later on in this uh, this presentation. So progress. Students who demonstrate progress over time are the students that do well. That's a fact. And consistency. I don't want, and this happens every single year, I don't want our year 11 students to get to their final mock exam results in February and March, and that to be the shock, the jolt that gets them into thinking, right, I need to start working. We need them to start working now. We're going to put a lot in place between now and May um, to, to assist and help students who, who may not of even put together a revision timetable yet. So we have got a number of important dates. You, this will be going on the, uh, the website, so you don't need to make the, a note of these tonight. But um, the mock exams start, the first round of mocks start on the 14th, 14th of November to the 30th of November. 
They've already taken mock exams, they've already had experience of revising and taking mocks in year 10. But we, we will be, in lesson time now, be preparing each student in each subject to do the best they can in the mocks, but we still need your help at home. Um, there'll be a year 11 consultation evening. That will uh, be on the 14th of December, and that will be an opportunity for you to come in again to school and to be able to speak with each subject teacher and discuss the progress of your, your child. So that's the equilateral triangle that I was talking about. That is really important. If we are to succeed, if every child in year 11 is to succeed, we need to be all singing on the same hymn sheet or working in the same direction. Other important uh, dates, we've got a year 11 options evening. Uh, that will be on the Tuesday, the 10th of January. And that is an opportunity for you to come in again, look at the six form options, um, after a brief introduction in the main hall, you'll be able to uh, visit departments and look at what they do at A-level, at Key Stage 5. Uh, and you'll be able to speak to their teachers about the courses they offer in sixth form. Uh, there will also be uh, uh, representatives from colleges outside and apprenticeship providers. So that'll be, that's a really important day. And the deadline for submitting applications uh, and course uh, choices for sixth form is Friday the 20th of January. Um, and those are the other looking further ahead. We've got the uh, launch of a revision website. So Mr. Dawson, who uh, is a, an assistant head and he's uh, responsible for raising attainment, he'll be launching a mini site uh, on our Hitching Boys website. And he'll be adding revision materials on there. Uh, uh, designed to, to help your students. Uh, and we'll be tasked to provide further activities for our Year 11 students over Christmas and after Christmas to assure that they're re revising effectively. I had a couple of Year uh, 11 students this week that said, Sir, I'm taking eight, I'm taking 10 GCSEs. I don't know how to revise properly. So that is why we're doing all this. We'll be doing this over the next few months to make sure that we are prepared and ready for the real thing later in the year. Um, and then the second round of mocks start on the 27th of February, right through to the 10th of March. And then we have our leavers breakfast on the, on the 12th of May. So that's where they depart to go on study leave. Okay, so strategies for effective learning and revision. This is where we need your help. We do this on a daily basis in class. But all these methods are backed up by scientific research on the best ways to learn and retain information. So we do a number of these in classroom. I'm just going to go over a couple of them. So retrieval practice. As, as subject teachers, we that, that's part of our practice. So. That could be in history, for example, if I'm teaching uh, GCSE history. I'll have six or seven questions from the previous lessons on the board as I do right now to test their, um, their, their, their learning. Retrieval practice is really important. A good way for a student to, to, uh, to do that at home would be to put away classroom materials and to write or sketch, sketch down everything they know about the topic they're revising. So putting away their Chromebooks, putting away their exercise books, just writing and sketching down everything they know. Then they can check their work for accuracy by getting out their class materials and then log down the important points that they've missed. They can do lots of practice testing. I do this a lot with my, with my uh, in class with my uh, GCSE student. They can test themselves. They can create their own tests and they can trade off those tests with each other. It's a fantastic way of, of, uh, of, of, um, of retrieval practice. They can then make flashcards. Re they can recall information on them and then go beyond definitions by thinking of links between ideas. 
into leaving. That's another thing we do regular subject teachers, but that's where we switch between ideas during study lessons. They can do that at home. Classroom starters that we, we, we do are uh, an example of how we do this in, in class. We basically will put a list of questions on the board or, or and throw in there a couple of uh, topics from that we've studied earlier in the term. So it's really, really important um, that, they, that they, they know how to do this on their own. Dual coding. A lot of us are visual learners. Dual coding uh, is, is essential for, for, for visual learners. So, students to look through class materials and find visuals. Look at visuals and explain in their own words what they mean. They can take information from that and draw visuals to go along with it. In history, we, we, uh, we get students to draw timelines using an app called MindMap, and they can put visuals on that timeline. So it's really, really important that they can come up with different ways of representing information visually. So what I've done there, I've put on a hyperlink so that you can actually go to the website uh, that we've got on there. So you can basically sit down with your, uh, your student at home and basically look at proactive ways that they can revise. Okay, this is something that I, I came up with. A lot of uh, Year 11 students I've talked about don't know how to, to create a GCSE timetable that works. We're very, very lucky in that we've all got Chromebooks. So, um, a great way would be to um, produce a Google Calendar. Digital Calendar, the benefits of a digital calendar, are preferable because it's easy to make loads of edits on that. We have our Chromebooks, as I've said, and each student then can access their timetable on their smartphones. So they can refer to them at any time, any given time they like. So I've put a list of, of, of six or seven examples of what they need to do. Students need to figure out how much time they have to revise. They'll get their exam timetables. They've got their mock exam timetables. They can then figure out how much time. Students can then prioritize their subjects. They don't want to be revising for more than 30 minutes for each topic. The benefits of those, it breaks up their, their revision time, makes things more interesting, more varied. Cognitive psychologists and their research maintain that by varying what they're studying, improves their ability to discriminate against different sets of information. So strengthening their memory pathways. So there's lots and lots of, um, of different uh, ways of, of building a, a, a really good GCSE timetable. And I've put lots of, um, of different um, ideas on that. What I've also done is of a way to support your child at home. They must have a quiet place. It, it's a, it's, it sounds obvious, but they need a quiet, a quiet place where possible to complete homework, away from distractions. Encourage your child to adopt a realistic and reasonable homework and revision timetable. Do that now. Don't wait till the end of the mock exams. Um, so... Students should be focusing on subjects that they find challenging. So when they create their timetable, they should be, be prioritizing their, uh, the subjects that they, they find the, the most difficult. So if they're doing eight GCSEs, number one should be, if it's maths, for example, should be mathematics. And they should prioritize so the, 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 the stronger subjects are, um, are at the bottom. Encourage your child to revise topics they've, they haven't done for some time, even though they may not be doing them in class. This is where the interleaving comes in. So all those are top tips. Those are hyperlinks that you can go on. Um, 
All those are what we, we use in school, we use in class. And uh, encourage your child to take planned rest breaks. Make sure that in their timetable, they've, they've filled in other commitments. It might be sporting commitments. It might be leisure activities. Make sure that all that encompasses everything in their timetable. And it, but it's really, really important that they, they, they uh, have one eye on their mental health as well. So, with a view to that, uh, I've created that slide. Stress and anxiety, especially around exam time, is normal. There's nothing unknown about that. But it's how we manage that. Encourage open, informal communication at home. We'll be helping them. We've got a fantastic pastoral team here. I've got a fantastic head of year 11. I've got some fantastic PSWs that will help be there including myself, will be there to help them on a daily and a weekly basis. But make sure there's a clear line of communication at home as well. Encourage downtime from social media. I've had three teenagers all been through the same stage as where you're at now. And that is very, very difficult to, to, uh, uh, to, to get on top of. But Try and get mobile devices out of bedrooms. Get it rest is so important. Um, good night's sleep is imperative. Encourage socialising and study sessions with peers. I, I, I did, when I had a year 11 form uh, last year, I basically said, look, who's good in maths here? Who's good in English? They were helping one another get through it. So encourage socialising with peers. Set up study groups invaluable and keep your if there is a problem at home keep your child's tutor updated on any developments that may impact your child's well-being in school let's not leave it to the last minute it's all about early intervention and if you've got any serious concerns see your child's uh, gp i put a link on there for any sporting agencies if you if you need to contact any but I'm going to come back to this as well. We all want the same outcomes for our year 11s. Students have big dreams at Hitching Boys. They've got big ambitions. We're an outstanding school. We've got high expectations. But all three of us, the student, parents and teachers, all need to trust one another. We all need to have an open, honest, trusting clear communication between each other. So if there is a problem, ring us. Don't be frightened to ring us. Let us know. Early intervention is going to be the key here. We realised during the COVID pandemic that this relationship is more important now than it's ever been. We all want to get every one of our 207, 208 year 11s, we want them to realise their full potential. And we'll do it if we, if we basically have that open, honest, clear communication. And we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. I'm getting um, that laminated. So the learning journey that we're, we're on started in year 10. And if you look at that, we're probably in the, just past the reflect on your journey so far position. So we've got our November mocks coming up. This is the time where we start taking ownership of decisions. In January, we'll be applying for uh, sixth form and apprenticeships. So that is the learning journey. It's a nice visual, isn't it? It's a nice visual to know where you've been, what you've already learnt, and what journey you've yet, as, uh, what hurdles, and what journey is yet to come. So I'm going to get... Um, a lot of those printed out. They're going to be in every tutor room. If you want a copy of that, I can I, I can make sure that you've got a copy of that. But that's going to be on the uh, the website too. So it's really really important that our students know where they're at, and they know on what journey they're they're uh, they've, they're going on, and what is yet to come. But they've achieved so much. They've owned their their education. They take ownership of that. They've, they've learned how to adapt to change. They've revised and completed mock exams already. 
So they've, they, you know, it, they've got experience of that. They started taking ownership of the journey. So, I'll end by saying thank you very much for coming. I'm uh, quite moved, actually, the amount of people, sir, that have, uh, the amount of parents that have uh, uh, attended. We did put out on the letter that uh, it was non-compulsory, but um, on a wet Tuesday uh, afternoon, it's so, so, um, so good to see so many sh parents here. Okay, thank you very much indeed for coming, and we'll get your student to where he needs to be. Thank you.